That is a starter. I'm going to rebuild it. connection on this side um, of course disconnect your battery before you go doing this I've already done that push the boot down go that then the lock washer And the connection and one starter ready to be rebuilt. And of course, it's always good to put your bolts back where you found them. Long one goes here, short one goes here. And find something to cover up any holes you've made. What we're going to do here is when we get this cleaned off, as a little extra precaution, I'm going to scratch a couple little marks for myself so that I can put this all back on in the right order. Um, I know one spot that can be an issue is when you replace the plate inside with the brushes, you can put that backwards use the wrong registration marks in there and then it won't work and don't worry it won't make your engine run backwards <laughs> that's not how it works it's a clutch that won't engage in reverse when it goes one way it just won't work that what you have and whether or not you've got the right tools because this is a Japanese bike and it has the JIS Japanese industrial standard screws and you can spot it easily by the little dot I think sometimes there's another kind of mark there but usually I've seen them as a dot so you need the right kind of screwdriver not a regular Phillips because you'll just strip it out. Found my screwdriver. When you buy these, good idea to get an impact one so that you can get it in there good. Of course I don't have anything here. Let's... And I've let this soak for well a few minutes. Might not be enough, but there we go. It popped a little bit. And that one. Mm -hmm. uh, that soak a little more. Oh shit, I just cammed out. Son of a bitch. Alright, off camera, I got a little creative because unfortunately, <laughs> even with the JIS screwdriver, I still stripped it. I suspect that was my own not paying attention. You want to make sure this is good and seated in there. So I got a little creative and I locked this on there. There's not much purchase there because you've got this around here. And not to turn it, but I set it down on its side. And um, oh, it's not with me now, but I basically gave a good bang to try and tweak it and see if it made a difference. Guess what? made a difference. And before doing this, I immediately went online 
and ordered a replacement bolt because that's not pretty. It should look like this guy. Not that. So, here we are. And again, make sure you know where everything lines up. And so you can see, maybe, I made a little mark for myself. Just a little extra reassurance on top of all these other marks. And this turns off. There you go. And oh yeah, I should put my gloves back on because that's probably what you'll notice right away is all of the schmutz in there, carbon and stuff. Is that guy? These guys. Next step is to get the bottom half off. Right. That's also a uh, 10. Yep, that's, let's loosen this. All right. Let's see. There's a flat one that goes on the bottom there. You notice it kind of pushes in, right? So that's the next thing. I need to push that in so that I can pull this off. Um, if I can do it. Yeah, okay, got the plastic piece off. Get in there. Okay. <laughs> well, okay, that works too. <laughs> go. And we've got an o-ring right here. <clears throat> That's in the rebuild kit, so we'll be replacing that. There's that. Okay. And there's another o-ring here. That one comes right off. And now we're going to clean this one where the actual magnets are inside, right? But before we do that, just to show you that there is on this side one more. It's flat, as you can see, and it fits right on the end of that. So you can see there's a little clip right there. And that's what you'll open to be able to pull this off. Oh, there we go. All right, got that off. And that's off. With a broken tool, no less. These crappy Harbor Freight things come with a little spring, which somewhere along the way I apparently lost. Normally, in the kit I have a bearing that goes inside of here, but, and I still don't think I'm gonna replace that. That seems perfectly fine. And what you have here is glazing and this is what needs to be cleaned off. Um, basically it's carbon from the brushes and possibly dirt and other things and you also want to check and make sure that you don't have any pitting in there because what can happen is you'll get a little piece that gets stuck and you get an arc and it sparks and 
dig the hole into there. So you want to check for that and make sure everything is good and clean. And then you have to clean it, um, <clears throat> use some of the spray, electric spray. You want to use the right kind of thing because just about every cleaner out there is going to eat through this stuff and then you definitely have shorts all through this and it's basically completely worthless. I've gone ahead and take this out and sprayed it down with a little bit of um, Electromotive here, which is an electrical spray outside well ventilated and probably best just to hold your breath because this stuff is pretty nasty and um, Once that's clean wiped it off a lot of it will evaporate away and the next step is To clean off some of this gunk here. You can see some of the carbon buildup in the path of the brushes as they go around and probably a little bit of other junk gets in there, particles, and then it gets gummed and that's what happens. You'll lose your connection because it's not getting a good clean contact. Um, plus little bits in there could cause it to arc and then you've got a much bigger problem. Also um, know that these have to be a specific range of diameters because over the years people might have clean these and taken them down a little bit and um, I'll have to look later because I don't know right now what that number is off the top of my head but when you take this down there's a minimum that it can be anymore and you can't do it and part of that is because you also have mica underneath that's the grooves in between and that's where a lot of the carbon will collect and they have a specific depth that they need to be a tolerance too little and um, you don't get a good contact with a brush it's not proper going around too deep and then you get carbon will collect in there and it can't be thrown out by um, you know the centrifugal force so it gets stuck in there and might stick long enough that you end up with an arc situation yet again um, and that's not good we don't want those kind of things so the next step is to clean this up and I've already cleaned through the grooves here with a toothpick because on this one they weren't that bad but you can see just kind of going along right and be careful you don't want to scratch anything here in fact that's one of the things you want to look for is to see if there's any scratching that needs to be kind of buffed out very gently because really you don't want to take any more off of this than you need to It'd be better just to get rid of that. So that's what your goal is. And you have to be a little particular on what you use to clean it. Um, right here what I have is aluminum oxide sandpaper and I think this is 800 grit. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. That sandpaper and there's also um, brush brush uh, commutator cleaner and it's also used for seeding the brushes which we can get into um, more for larger uh, motors than this and probably one thing you'll see if you look at a couple of videos online you'll see people explaining how to go around this some of them don't really explain it right. This needs to stay perfectly round. So you might see someone sanding, turn sand, turn sand, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. Um, a better way is to kind of loop this around and turn it. And probably the best way is if you could put it in a, a drill. Well, the best way is to put it into a lathe. I don't have a lathe, um, but a drill bit might work if you can get enough of a purchase on there to sand it around. So that's one way to do it. You also want to turn in the direction of the motor. If you remember, so kind of easy to see, there's the gear. And if you remember inside the whole starter, this was the side that the gear was on, this was the side the brushes were on. So that's the gear and it's turning that way. There's an engine turn. So if it's turning that way, you want to sand it that way, right? Like so. Yeah, okay, that's zeroed out. Um, this is just a cheapie from Harbor Freight that gives me the idea. So I believe it is 27, I'll check in a second here, is the limit. And this is 27.9. Yeah, 27.9. 
And just checking my notes. No, oh, 27. All right. So I'm within spec there. All right. Next up, we're going to measure the depth of the mica after we've cleaned all the gunk off there. Make sure that's still within spec. And, um, well, it needs to be 0.6 millimeters is where you want it. So I'll just give ourselves an idea. 0.6 is pretty small, right? Well, that got to 7. Let's see here if I can get that back to 6. Yeah. So you can kind of see that is minuscule. So we can kind of eyeball it in this case. It's not that far off. Now that I have cleaned up the surface of the commutator so that I can get a good connection, I found a poor defenseless cup and cut it in half, poked a hole in the bottom so that um, it can serve as my third hand while I check for resistance. And there's three things you do. First is go, well, I'm going to do the opposite. So you go opposite, 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 opposite all the way around. And what you want is to get um, around 0.1.2. I forget what it is on this bike. But um, most important is to make sure that they're all pretty close to the same. If you have something that's completely off of the other, that might be an issue. So we'll start by going around and 0 0.2, 0 0.2. All right, now next one is to go one by one. And I should explain what, what I'm doing here when you do this test is, so this comes through here, winds around, comes up to the next one, winds around, comes up to the next one. So you're checking resistance against each of them, and then you're checking resistance across the length of the wire going all the way around. You're looking for anything that might be a short. So this one's a little easier. Now the final is to test for any shorts between here and here. And that one is also pretty simple. So you just go around. In this case, you're looking to see, um, looking for any uh, continuity issues. If this changes, that's an issue. If it stays there, I'm good. All right, and I think we are good. All right, so according to the multimeter, this is a perfectly good armature. But how do you put it all back together? Hmm, first up, we've got a little peg there. And this gear drops into that, pops into place, and put in your planetary gears there, and throw on some gloves so you can put a little grease in there. And I'm going to use some red grease, you can use molly grease, just use something that's decent quality and can tolerate some high temperatures. I doubt it gets terribly hot in there, but it'll get pretty hot. And get that in there pretty good. Don't fill it too full because you can actually slow down your starter, bog it down with too much grease. Um, and then once you've kind of got it in there, turn the gear around. Get it kind of in there good, moving. All right, set my gloves aside, and there's that piece. 
Now this part <clears throat> has two marks in it. You can see a cutout here and you can see another notch here. That notch also matches up to the peg that we saw in here. The cutout matches a, um, there it is, a little bit there. And once you've got your armature in, you want to put that there. But first, don't forget you have a washer that needs to go in there as well. And that goes right there. And there's your mark, and there's your peg. You can see it from the outside as well. And there you go. Okay. Now, you also have uh, an O-ring needs to go on here. So get that on there. And now, ooh, sneaky little guy trying to get away from me. <laughs> okay. Hopefully he stays there long enough for me to do this part. So use the peg to line up to a hole here. I went ahead to make it easier for myself, added a little blue line. And that goes on there. And luckily my gear was lined up to it, so that covers that part. Next up is to put the brushes on. And you'll see there's a little locating tab right here, or notch, I guess you could say, a little square section. And that matches up to the notch on this end that is closest to the top here, which I don't know if you can see is right there. But can't just put it on there. We got to hold back the brushes. And get that guy back in there. Probably a few ways you can do this. Push that back and maybe put a little flat piece of metal in there to hold it in place. In my case, these seem to do the trick with that little hole in there. And I just drop this in just to hold the brush in place. Same thing on this side. I just want to hold the brush in place. And now, I find my locating tab and let's slide right on. Okay. Get that drop down in there. There you go. And that comes out. That comes out. So now that's on. The next trick is to get this on. Alright, now we've got the o-ring on. The next thing is, you might have noticed when you got the brushes that the positive terminal there came with a bunch of stuff attached. It might have had these little uh, pressed fiber washers and some plastic bits and whatnot. But um, they're not all necessary. And here's one that you would use. This goes on the inside. It's got a little shelf on it. You might also have one that's not got that shelf on there. And then mine came with this little tiny O-ring, but I'm going to replace the original larger O-ring that went on the outside with a new one. I have a kit here because it didn't come in the kit, um, rebuild kit. And there's a plastic part here that goes on the outside. And then, of course, there's a washer that can go in there. And this, I'm not sure if we even need that washer. There. Yeah, I think that's all we need. So here, we got this guy back up here. And also, that same tab right there that you lined this up, there's also a square piece right here that also needs to line up to that so and you'll notice if you kind of eyeball it you can see that the scratch or a sharpie mark or whatever you made will also line up and it kind of lines up to where the positive terminal is so let's see if 
clumsy old me can kind of get this put together. That seats into there, and that goes through here. Oh, out of balance. There's that. And there's my O ring. Sits into there. Oh, I just realized you can't really see this, can you? I'm not sure if I can do this at an angle for you to see. Let's try that. So I've got my O ring kind of presses in there. It might not press in right now, but when I tighten everything down, I think it'll kind of go in there. And we got this. And let's get this guy out here. And then we can start cinching things down. on the inside, it fits in its spot here. Keep going down. Still good in there. And we are up. And let's double check this. Yep, that got kind of pushed out of its spot. There we go. Now, this Lines up to that. Oh, oh, <laughs> I almost forgot. Don't forget to put that. That's your little thin washer, and that goes here. That was a close call. All right, line this up again. That goes there. And... Oh. There we go. Now, bolt it down. Oh, <laughs> helps if you bolt it the right way. And these are the new bolts because I stripped the old ones. A second here. Let's get that guy in so we don't lose him. So now the next bit is finding out did I do it right? And for that, you need a battery. We got to make sure this guy's ready to go back on the bike or uh, if we need to just send it to the glue factory. So if you remember um, this here, that's your negative. That's your positive. So, I'm going to use the battery. Brand new Yuasa. And we can double check. This thing's charged up well. Set to DC volts. Positive, negative. Zero them out. Positive, negative. 12.6. Yep, that works. That guy aside, this guy here. All right, and we've got some jumper cables. And again, positive, negative. There's that guy. Now, this guy, um, I guess I should say before you do this, um, make sure you're not in a uh, um, a hayloft or, I don't know, a, a tub of gasoline because um, when you do this it will spark probably. Um, first you got to find a good ground here, just somewhere on the body where that guy's good, on there solid. Probably got to hold this too because he's going to start moving with that centrifugal force. Um, watch your eyes and does it work? <laughs> 
check that shit out. All right, done.